Fishing, what it is and how to avoid it. If nothing else, I think this is one of the most important things that we're going to cover in this class. Uh, fishing is becoming more and more common, and uh, well, we'll see. Let's let's talk about it. So phishing, it's an attempt to gain information by pretending to be a trustworthy website or email. So uh, images or well-crafted HTML are used in an email to convince you that it's from like say Bank of America or something like that. And then uh, you know it'll say, oh, your password's out of date, please enter your old one, whatever. Um, they use JavaScript to fake URLs. They will typically send stuff by email. So if you ever get an email that says, hey, you know, your account has been hacked, can you uh, go change it? Be wary of that. The best way to deal with that is to actually go to the site that is claiming this. So if you get an email from Adobe that says your account's been hacked, actually go to adobe.com. Don't click the link in the email. This phishing costs the U.S. roughly $2 billion a year in identity theft and everything else. So things to look for. Suspicious URLs. Uh, we'll get into that more a little bit. Incorrectly spelled words. Non-personalized greetings. So if it says, dear customer, instead of, you know, dear Bob or whatever. This is an example of a phishing email from stanford.edu um, and you see it sort of highlights all of the problems. So the reasonable sender but it has a non-matching and misspelled return address. So it says it's from PayPal, that's reasonable, but it's from this website called support.com, like what is that? And this is misspelled, it's no replay, it should be no reply. Uh, the subject is weird, you know, you, you have one new message, uh, dear client, rather than your name. This is not quite properly spelled. And they're saying that, you know, uh, they're suspending your account, it's kind of a dire consequence. They have sort of unprofessional formatting, the way this is sort of on another line. And again, they kind of point out a lot of stuff about security. They kind of have this sort of legal appearing thing and this weird enclosure name with well, this verification form. Now this would be a good place to sort of have a Trojan horse to infect your computer. So this is something that we need to be aware of. Like if it's saying this, don't download this form. Just, you know, delete this email and go to PayPal and see if everything's okay. A good place to learn more is here at stanford.edu. Um, I'll put a link to this uh, in the course page so you don't have to you know, write it down from here. Here's another example of um, phishing. I got this from blog.onlyemail.com. Uh, this is from Bank of America. This looks pretty normal. Um, one of the things that's kind of a problem is this right here. It'll say this email was sent to, and they have this redacted thing. This is an actual email from Bank of America. I have had bank accounts with them in the past. So what they've done is they've taken a legitimate email and just copied the picture. They've done a screenshot of it and then clicking on any of these links that look valid would take you to a phishing website that would have a website that looked just like a Bank of America's only it would be recording your information. This is another one that's a little scary. This is a fake website that's designed to look exactly like Facebook. You can see the URL here is not facebook.com so basically what they're doing is they're trying to get your Facebook login and password. So you would enter their information here, what would happen, you'd click login, and it would they would record this information, your email and your password, and it would redirect you to the Facebook page, and you'd think, oh, well, that's weird, and then just enter it again, and everything would be fine. Or if you were already logged in, it would if you already have an active session, it would take you in, and you'd think you had actually logged in. So phishing, true or false? Looking at these URLs, just take a minute and look at them and to yourself just kind of think which of these are legitimate and which of them are not. Like which ones would you trust and which ones wouldn't you. So just looking at them, just think about it for a few minutes and then we're going to talk about you know which ones are good and which ones are not. So here the ones in red are the bad ones, the ones in green are the good ones. This one is bad because Whereas it says Microsoft.browser.ie, Browser.ie is not a website that's associated with Microsoft. It should be, because that's pretty cool. 
but this is the top level domain for Ireland and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute and this is a subdomain this can literally be anything this is completely in control of whoever owns this domain name so if you own browser.ie you could have opera chrome safari browser.ie you could have Macintosh you could have water buffalo pangolin anything that's the same with this one. This is a, this top level domain in E. This is the top level domain for the country of Nigeria. So it's paypal.account.ne. So this is the subdomain paypal at the URL account or at the this is the subdomain paypal at the domain name account.ne. Now this one could be perfectly fine. This is account. B of A dot com. This is for Bank of America. If you're familiar with Bank of America, you'll know that BOFA, B O F A dot com, is their domain name. So this looks like it's okay. The same with this one. It says paypal.com slash account. You know paypal.com, that's legitimate. Slash account, that's okay. This one, you might just glance at it and see fbi.phishing.com. Uh, GW, that's probably a site, but no, that's that's bad because again, this I don't remember where GW is. I was just looking for one that started with a G, and it says FBI, so that kind of makes you think, oh, it's probably legitimate phishing.gw. This is the actual site, I think, phishing.fbi.gov. So again, this is a subdomain. This is a domain name, this FBI, and this is the top level domain, .gov. These are really hard to get. You have to be a legitimate government entity to have these. So the only place that's going to have them is going to be places like the FBI, the DMV, the White House, things like that. This is another one that's, uh, even though it's got this kind of weird name, this is also legitimate. This would be for this user, which this person probably exists. Um, this one, it looks like it's going to be legitimate because, you know, hey, I have a Mac. Maybe this is my profile for their iCloud service or whatever. But this, again, profile.com, anybody could own this. And then they could put anything here. They could put Etsy, Pinterest, anything, .profile.com. This one, it's okay because it's paypal.com and the subdomain is account. This one I was particularly proud of because it looks like you're going to store .etsy, you know, dot com or whatever but it's it's not this is I think Syria so you know this is et.sy and this is a subdomain that's that's kind of frightening so I want to look at dissecting these URLs so if we take this one this microsoft.browser.ie and we look at this piece we have the dot ie this is a suspicious top level domain or TLD that's what this is. The .com, .edu, .gov, they're, they're top level domains. Like That's as high up as you can go on a web browser. If you think about it like the files on your computer, if you think about it like the file system on your computer, the C drive, if you're at C colon slash, that's as high up as you can go. That's kind of what this is. And then this is a, this is a particular location in this top level domain, and this is a particular location in this. It sort of goes backwards. So look at these. Not all of the unknown top level domains domains are sus suspect, but be cautious. .edu and .gov are very hard to fake. You have to go through pretty rigorous criteria in order to get an .edu or a .gov top-level domain. .com, .org, .net, these are easy to get. I have several uh, .coms and a couple .nets. Like, it doesn't take much to register them. When you start getting into things like .ie, .ne, .at, these you need to be more careful about. Not because of where they come from, but because these are new. These haven't been available for very long, so you know, a, pretty much every .com is taken, but not every .ie, .ne, .at have been taken. So you might see something that looks legitimate, but it isn't because you know they were able to register it. It's not it has anything. It has nothing to do with where it's originating. It just has to do with availability. So then this part, this before the dot domain name dot top level domain this is called a subdomain it can literally be anything it's controlled by whoever owns the domain name so watch out like if you see something that says Microsoft this may or may not have anything to do with Microsoft and probably doesn't because Microsoft would either be at msn.com or microsoft.com so just be aware of that so then this is the domain name this is sort of the main part this you have to register this with a valid registering agency. It's ICANN in the US. I don't know what it is in other countries. It's pretty hard to fake. Um, 
it can be done. You can use scripts and things to fake it, but most of the people that are doing this kind of thing don't go to that much effort. It's easier to send you a copy of an email from a legitimate source with a, a bad URL in it. But just be aware of what is in your location bar. So in summary, get and use antivirus software. That's one of the <laughs> best things you can do. Um, don't follow links and suspect email and I would take that a step further and just don't follow links out of email if you can help it if you get an email from you know somebody proclaiming themselves to be a Nigerian prince and says they need help with something don't click those links that's that's not gonna end well make sure you know where a file is coming from before you open it if you get an email from Bank of America that says you need to turn in some kind of form don't click on the link in the email. Go to the Bank of America website. Make sure it's actually by typing the URL into your browser or into Google or something trustworthy and then find the form that way. Don't just get it out of the email. That doesn't that doesn't end well. And be aware of the sites you are visiting. If you're trying to get to Etsy, make sure you're at etsy.com, not store.et.sy. Just be aware and pay attention. That's one thing um, I want to talk about URL shorteners as the um, tech preview. So if you see those, they might be okay, they might not be. And I'd highly recommend watching that video. Um, again, as ever, I'm not going to test on it, but it's a lot of useful information that I think will make your lives a little bit better. Um, right, thanks. And Okay, I'd like to talk to you now about uh, URL shorteners. This is a service that's offered by Google in a bunch of different places. Basically what this does is it takes a URL like this um, and it turns it into a shorter one. It's kind of amusing to me that this shortened one is actually longer than the long URL. But you know, you can type something really long in like this. You put something in like this and click shorten URL and it takes this massive mess and it generates this little one. That's pretty handy because basically it lets you take something really big and paste it somewhere else. Uh, this came about primarily because of um, things like uh, Twitter where there were character limitations so you could put in a big URL and send it to somebody and still be within the character limits so some of the popular ones are bitly this is the one that I use when I use one and tiny URL uh, tiny URL I've used to use in the past I actually the only reason I don't use it anymore is because I was trying to use Twitter and Twitter used bitly um, you need to be a little cautious with these because the they, they have some issues. One of the big problems, they call it link rot. Say you have put a whole bunch of stuff in Bitly and Bitly goes out of business, then all those links are dead. Um, another problem, since this top level, uh, since the top level domains might be different, like Bitly uses .ly, they are under the jurisdiction of wherever that top level domain is from. So suppose we go and look at that list. So this is a list of top level domains. If we want to find out LY is Libya. So any link that you put through Bitly is subject to the laws and jurisdictions of Libya. So that's just something to know when you're using Bitly or tinyurl. I think tinyurl just uses tinyurl.com slash something. So that was a little bit safer, um, but the URLs aren't quite as small. Uh, you see, this gives a pretty good example. I would use this one, if anything, but unless it's absolutely necessary, I don't think they're really important. I want to mention them because we talked about phishing this week, and one thing that you can do with phishing is if, say, you know, you see a URL that's bit.ly slash something, who knows what that is, you know? Uh, so be careful, like just be cautious when you see those links. Just because it's from bit.ly or tiny URL and it says, you know, pictures of cute kittens, it doesn't mean that's what it is. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, URL shorteners. It's a short video, but it's just something to know about and to be aware of, you know, how to look at it and make sure um, make sure they are what they think, what you think they are.